Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, happy National Knife Week. Today, we're gonna be going through how to do some basic routine maintenance on Benchmade knives specifically, um, but this will apply to any knife with a crossbar style lock. I'm um, just kind of talking about what you can do to uh, maintain the longevity of your knives and, and take care of them as these are pretty uh, expensive, uh, but just to take care of any crossbar locking knives because um, they will require some maintenance because there's a lot of moving parts in them, but they are, um, you know, very sturdy, strong knives. The crossbar lock is uh, definitely tested and has been around for long enough to say that it is one of the strongest locking mechanisms for a knife. So to start, um, after using my Benchmates for a little while, I will uh, periodically do this maintenance. I don't know, like, depends on how much I use them. I don't use all these a whole lot, uh, but the ones that I do use a lot, the 940, Bug Out, um, and Adamus that I typically use outside, I'll, I'll clean them off. Um, just start with some warm soapy water and a sponge scrub uh, to get all the tape and dirt and uh, mud and all kinds of other gunk off and just rinse some water into the axis lock and get all that stuff out of there try and get it all out of there i'll spray some compressed air in there to try and get it out as well i don't really take these apart a whole lot um, unless you absolutely have to because they're a super super pain to um, put them back together but just periodically spray some air in there rinse them off with soap get them cleaned up um, and then after doing that, I will take a drop of REM oil um, and just put a drop right here where the crossbar lock engages with the actual knife, uh, like blade, I guess you call it. Not really blade, but that part in there where it engages, you'll see it just put some uh, oil right there. And then when it's open, I also put another drop of oil like here and kind of get some down in there in the pivot and then work it into the pivot. Um, and with crossbar lock knives, another thing that will happen after you use them for a little while is they'll develop a little bit of blade play, um, either horizontal, which is kind of just that side to side blade play, or vertical, which is the up and down, which this doesn't have any up and down. Um, let's see if I have one with up and down here. Um, the Mini Adamus is notorious for having some vertical blade play, which is not good. That's kind of a flaw in design because the crossbar lock uh, does not engage all the way on to the um, actual stock of the blade there you'll see so it doesn't engage all the way and vertical blade play can be dangerous because the knife uh, when you're putting a lot of pressure on it could disengage and close onto your fingers which would not be a good day so make sure you're being safe when you're using crossbar lock knives make sure they're locked up all the way um, in order to fix this blade play you're going to want to tighten up the pivot a little bit so with Benchmade we have a t10 um, screwdriver bit driver whatever you call it and I believe, I don't think I've ever had a Benchmade that's not been a T10. Um, generally, if it's not T10, that might mean it's a fake, unless there are some niche models, maybe like a mini bug out or something's not a T10 or something, but I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're all T10 in my experience. And you're gonna wanna just ever so slightly touch the pivot and play with the pivot a little bit. And uh, you can find that perfect balance between drop shut and um, not having any wiggle in the blade. And, and sometimes it can take a little while to find that sweet spot, but it is worth finding. So for example, in uh, the Adamus, it's a little bit easier to find that because the blade is much heavier and it will swing shut on its own a lot easier than something as light as say a bug out will just drop shut on its own. Um, so if you have a heavier knife, that might be easier to, to kind of learn what you're looking for and learn how to feel the drop shut, um, and, and uh, no blade play equilibrium point, I guess we'll call it. But kind of just have to play with it, loosen up and, and tighten the pivot based on uh, what you're looking for. And then once you've done that, um, you can take the screw out, the uh, pivot screw out, put a single, very ever so slightly small drop of Loctite on there and screw it back in, get it back to the same point that you just found and do not touch it for 24 hours while it cures. And that will kind of just hold the screw in place while, um, you know, you're using it periodically. Now, Benchmade knives, because they're higher end knives, they generally on their um, pivot will have this like little flat part of the uh, circular part of the screw to prevent it from moving around when you're using it. But sometimes still they'll loosen up a little bit and that can be a pain um, and just cause a lot of that, that blade play that you're seeing in the, in the knife. Um, so Loctite will help prevent that. You can also put Loctite on all these other screws, like the body screws, the clip screws. Um, whether you want to do that, that's up to you or not. I don't put Loctite on um, any other screws. I, I very rarely, again, I very rarely take crossbar lock knives apart because I hate putting them back together. I'm not very good at it and it takes a while and it's very aggravating. <laughs> so unless I absolutely have to, I don't really um, 
but just kind of cleaning them out and making sure that, that they're tightened up and tuned properly is, is a good way to make sure that your knives will last. Um, another thing that a lot of people have problems with relating to bench maids is, is lock stick. And that's where when you open the knife, uh, you're using it and then you gotta close it. And right when you pull that crossbar lock back, this knife doesn't have any lock stick, but you'll feel that little like extra click and you gotta, gotta muscle it past there um, in order to get it to drop and close. And that can be quite annoying. It can, uh, you know, make it a little harder to close your knife if you're trying to just swing it shut. It can be a little annoying to use, like, ergonomically. Um, and sometimes that might mean you just have to break the knife in a little bit. You have to break in the, the knife, the Omega Springs, um, and, and all that. Uh, but sometimes it'll just not want to go away. And after you've done, if you're done playing with the pivot and, and oiling it up and it's still not going away, another thing that you can do is, and I'll show you an example with this little oil straw here. Um, you can take, imagine this is like a pencil here. You take some pencil lead, some graphite, and rub it at the points of contact with the crossbar, where the knife touches the crossbar and where the crossbar lock engages. And that will help reduce some of the friction. That can help the crossbar lock kind of break in, per se. You can even put it directly on the crossbar if you can get it in there. Um, this is a little bit narrow of a knife, so it might be harder to do that on a like a 940. But some of the other ones with wider crossbar locks, it, it'll make it a lot better to kind of Again, that, that graphite will help reduce the friction and help it um, disengage and engage better. So that's just a, a little tip that I've learned over the years where you know you can break in your knives a little faster. You don't want to overdo it because that graphite and the oil mixing will get a little bit messy and gunk up the internals. But um, just a, a little bit, just a little scribble on there will be just a good job. And you can probably see it on... I did it on my amphibian. You can usually see, like, there's uh, marks in there. Let me see if I can see. That's uh, from where the graphite is kind of worn in, and I haven't really cleaned it off. So you can you can wipe it off, and the lock stick should go away. But um, that's a, what I have found to be a very helpful tip in, in terms of uh, crossbar lock knives. Um, a lot of people also ask, how long does it take to break in Omega Springs with a Benchmade? It depends on how much you're kind of playing with it or using it. Um, anywhere from like one to three weeks, I'd say. They should be broken and it should be real smooth. Um, and then after that, you just got to be careful if they don't break on you. <laughs> so hopefully you have Omega Springs that last a long time. Um, you know, modern Benchmades seem to have a poor quality control when it comes to springs or using cheaper components or whatever it may be. But a lot of people are breaking springs more often now. And um, you just got to be careful that you're you're not doing that. I don't think, as far as I know, there's no maintenance that you can do that's going to prevent that other than making sure your knife is oiled well and um, the, the springs are not, there's not a lot of gunk in there that's that's hindering them and making it uneven uh, when you're pulling. Like, let's say you're just pulling on one side or the other. And in a perfect world, that wouldn't really matter. But, you know, again, with these cheaper springs that they've been using, these more thin springs, it, it seems to be um, just the way that, that uh, things are going with their company. So... It is what it is. Um, there's a lot of hate out there for Benchmade. They still make a decent product and um, just important to make sure that you take care of them. I think that should cover everything. Um, one last thing, just with all your knives, make sure you're putting, let's see what I can find, a, a very thin kind of coating of oil on it. You see that on the uh, Mini Adamas there, just on this crewware. It is a coated crewware blades. So it really doesn't even matter, uh, but it is good practice to kind of just keep a thin layer of oil along your knives so they don't rust. Um, rust is a pain to deal with, especially if it kind of gets into the parts where you'll have to take the knife apart to, to clean it off. Um, so make sure your knives are oiled well and you just take a little thin coating of oil. Now, if you're going to be using these with food, please do not use REM oil right here on the package. It says harmful or fatal if swallowed. So if you're eating stuff after cutting it with like a, a Benchmade, uh, make sure you're using mineral oil or food safe oil of some sort. Please do not use REM oil. <laughs> Uh, I accidentally cut a steak the other night with, uh, I don't know, I think it was like a spider coat that I had oiled up previously, and I could taste the rim oil, I think, on it, and I, I was, it was not a pleasant experience. So uh, be careful with that. Just make sure you're being safe and not ruining your, your steaks, and uh, you have clean knives that, that have the correct oil on it. But I think that should cover it. Uh, if there's anything I missed, let me know. If there's anything else that you do to make sure your bench maids or other crossbar locking knives are taken care of, um, they can be finicky sometimes, again, just because there are so many moving parts. But, you know, they are fun to use. They are very sturdy locks. you just got to make sure that they are maintained properly. 
Um, that should wrap it up for this video. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed. Um, I hope you're enjoying your National Knife Week. I'm trying to put out some videos to keep you entertained as we move into Saturday here, National Knife Day. Um, and if there's anything that you'd like to see this week, let me know. Leave a comment. Um, you can find me on X or Twitter now. I'm starting to kind of get into that and support free speech. And um, I'm trying to post some the deals that I see on knives and kind of what knives I'm looking at and, and stuff like that. So if you've got X or Twitter, follow me on there and uh, hope to keep you up to date on some knife deals. Um, and lastly, I just, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I set up Amazon links finally for all the stuff that you see in the video. So if there's something that you're looking for, uh, I'll try to make it easy for you to find. Um, but if not, let me know and I'll be happy to help you look for it or find it. Uh, but again, that, that'll wrap it up for today. Thank you for those of you who have watched the end. And again, just those of you who have subscribed and liked these videos and watched all the way to the end. I really appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. And uh, you know, I enjoy making these videos for y'all. So take care again. Enjoy the rest of your week. And um, thanks for watching.